and hello. Perfect. Perfect, everybody. Okay, so my name is Iris Sage. Thank you, Hairbrain. Thank you, everyone, to my IG to be in here. Um, I'm going to go through and give a little uh, demo today within my uh, Perspective is Key class that I host here inside of Las Vegas, um, here at uh, my loft here in Las Vegas, and I do one-on-ones here, and I also teach one-on-twos and small group classes here inside my loft, keep them much more intimate and uh, share my 25 plus year perspective within the hair industry. Um, today, what I'm gonna share with you, um, if you watched on, <clears throat> if you're watching, if you're a hair nerd like myself and watched uh, Hairbrain this morning on their Instagram, they had uh, little snips and she did uh, um, kind of more of a triangular shape. And then also on the Hairbrain for, um, on Facebook for Hairbrain, um, Gerard did more of a, um, did a uh, um, bias, cut off the bias, still in a more triangular situation. Both in bobs, I'm gonna do similar in a sense of a bob, but I'm gonna do the exact opposite, where theirs could be, especially considered amongst the youth, a little bit more Karen-y, um, cause that seems to be the big creative term nowadays. Um, but uh, uh, um, mine's gonna be exact opposite, basically I'm gonna be disconnecting the layers and making it quite short all throughout the inside, inside that box. Um, so here are two examples, basically. Just to give you a little heads up on this. Here's, here's more, more of a bob length example here. Um, and just went through with the layers, went through, cut the bob, cut the bob, and then went through and layered out and disconnected it. So it's quite short here to extremely long right next to it. Yeah, that's one thing that uh, I'm well into is putting very strong disconnections into things to really change the whole view and the shape and the way you look at it to where you to where it's very seamless i like it to be very melted like color would be melted and seamless this was simply air dried so there's nothing fancy that i did to it afterwards to uh, make it look seamless like this and to make it have that short length into much longer length right next to it um so that's something i'm well into that's more the length that we're going to be playing with this is more of a look on the, kind of like a longer length of itself into more of a um melody shag feel I'm all cut with scissors, all cut blunt, and you can see very seamless and something that's very short right here to very, very, very long right next to it, yeah? So I'm well into that disconnection because it really elongates and really spreads the eye. I'm well into spreading the eye and uh, expanding the frame. There's one thing that uh, since Instagram came into my world of hairdressing a couple years back, I've realized that that's one thing that I'm well into is really expanding this, the frame of things. Um, and today again, I'm gonna be working more of a bob length, disconnected bob. I apologize, um, I see so many great things coming through here. Uh, hey Joe, so many great things coming through here on uh, um, Facebook here through, through Hairbrain. Uh, I apologize that I am here by myself, so I'll try my best to answer any of your questions as well as I can. Um, and if not, I'll get back to it later. So what I've done here, previously asked you to be respectful of timing. So I went through, wet down my, my dolly here, combed everything first down off the natural fall, and then I went through and found a center line between 12 and six. So let me back up to, I deal with, um, a, years ago I created a concept called the clock cutting concept. Um, and it's a, a different way to look at cutting hair. And the way I do with that is I look at the head as a clock. So just like an analog clock, think of the nose as, 12 o'clock, the right ear is three o'clock, the back vertebrae is six o'clock, and the left ear is nine o'clock. Those are the primary hours. And then, <clears throat> just like with color, you have primary, secondary, tertiary. I'm not a big fan of the word tertiary, so I did not use tertiary hours, and I like to keep it simple anyway. So, with the clock cutting concept, we have primary and secondary. Primary hours, again, 12, three, six, and nine. The secondary hours are the access points, or where those primary hours would meet directly in the middle. Yeah, the corners. So between 12 and three, if they were to start walking at the same time, they would meet right in the front right corner here of 130, yeah? It wouldn't be one, it wouldn't be two, it's too close to one, it wouldn't be, uh, I'm sorry, it wouldn't be one, because it'd be too close to 12, and it wouldn't be two, because it'd be too close to three, therefore 130, yeah? 4.30, 7.30, 10.30. I hope you guys can all see that. That's the box, those are the squares. So primary hours, 12, three, six, nine. Secondary, 1.30, 4.30, 7.30, and 10.30. I hope you guys can see that. Those give us an understanding as per what time we cut it, or times we cut it, as per what shape we're going to acquire horizontally, front to back, yeah? Side to side movements, yeah? So over direction controls this basically. So if I were to over direct everything back and cut it back at six o'clock, it would be shortest at six, longer towards 12, A-line, 
Mormon Bob, Triangular Bob, Karen, call the manager, call it what you want, that's what it's gonna do, yeah? If we were to cut everything, pull everything forward and cut it here at 12 o'clock, it would be shortest at 12 o'clock, round, longer towards six, round, mullet, shag, call it what you want, that's what it's gonna do. I'm not concerned about what you call it, guys. I'm concerned about what it do. Feel me? So, if I were to overdirect everything back to the secondary hour of 4.30, It'd be short as that 4.30, a longer torso on the three o'clock side, and even longer torso on the nine o'clock side because it had further time travel. I hope you guys can all see that. All right, um, so that gives us an understanding then of what time we cut it as per what shape we're going to acquire horizontally. And that's on the horizontal dimension. The next dimension that we play with, within cutting hair truly, is the up and down movement, the elevation, the, the vertical dimension, yeah? And on that, traditionally, everyone talks about degrees. I'm not so much concerned about degrees other than my armpits. If I get a little bit out of order, I just remind people I'm vegan and I move on. Yeah, I keep it simple. Um, and within keeping it simple, um, I find that hairdressers generally aren't like best friends with numbers. Um, and if you put a little circle and a square at the corner of the number, it becomes even more complicated and confusing. Um, and generally we play with, there's 360 of them, but we generally play with at least 180 of them on this head. That's so many areas and ambiguous things and confusion. So I like to try to tighten down as much as possible and keep it very kind of dude friendly too. Um, so in that manner, I look at if a section of hair, whether it's vertical or horizontal, is parallel. If this hair is parallel to the floor and to the ceiling, that's right at noon. Yeah. For me, if it's earlier than noon, if it's earlier than noon, so that all earlier than noon, I know me, I'm more of a night owl. So if it's early in the noon, I'm much heavier, I'm building up weight, the coffee has not kicked in yet. I'm in graduation land, yeah? As soon as I get to noon, it's kind of almost that safe spot to where it's really neither building up weight or, or taking away weight, really. Um, but as soon as it gets above noon, coffee's starting to kick in, I'm getting much lighter, much easier going, I'm in layer land, yeah? So I keep it very simple on the vertical dimension, parallel floor and ceiling, and using, utilizing the room as your reference points in a lot of situations, it's very easy to find a straight uh, parallel floor and ceiling spot. If you're somewhere in the middle, it's hard to get to that same spot every time sometimes, yeah? So I keep it very boxy and uh, foxy as far as I'm concerned. Again, parallel floor and ceiling is noon, below noon graduation line, above noon layer. Yeah, so you guys appreciate that. That's kind of the uh, generic insides of my clock cutting concept. Now to go into describing things in that method. So I went through and I drew a line. I stood at six o'clock. I drew a line from 12 to six, right down the 12, 12 and six o'clock line. And also one important thing is I squatted when I got down to the bottom area. I squatted down, I didn't go like this. because if I go like this, likely you see that comb, it's gonna curve, yeah? So it's gonna take me a while to draw a pure straight line. It's very easy to draw a pure straight line if I simply squat. And then you get that nice round booty, yeah? Anyway, just kidding, kind of. Um, so I drew that. And then I stood over at the secondary hour of 4.30. And I went from that line of 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock line, and I groomed in there like I was a dresser. And I went through almost like a golfer, taking a couple swings before you could do your drive, taking a couple warm-up swings. I took a couple warm-up comb throughs. I drank a cup of, cup of coffee today, a cup or two, so I'm a little bit high energy. Don't mind me. Anyway, I uh, drew in... I took a couple swings in here to practice drawing in there and grooming in those hairs, and then I decided to go ahead and swing and draw in. I wanted to draw in a very nice circular line without any major corners, yeah? And the way I do that without drawing any major corners is to stand at the corner. It's another reason why this clock concept is very friendly. It helps things out. It lets you become much more effective and more time friendly, basically, funny enough. Um, so standing at the corner allows me to not draw any corner in the line. Yeah, be very friendly. Um, <clears throat> so I drew that circle in, and all of that is um, basically starting at the apex of the bangs, the high area of the bangs, and then right on through. So what I'm going to do now, go through and moisturize this. Thank you all for viewing. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate you. I hope you're enjoying your quarantine or enjoying your life back to work. I'm, I live here in Las Vegas and we, did, we have been able to get back to work and I don't say that to uh, give any kind of flex or, uh, um, or sadness to anyone that's not being able to get back to work, but uh, uh, 
it's a nice feeling to get back to work, I can say that much. Anyway, so what I'm gonna work with, <clears throat> again, working and utilizing the, the clock cutting concept, I'm gonna cut from corner to corner. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna cut a flat line. I'm gonna say flat so that way she's definitely Karen free. I'm gonna keep a flat line going from, again, the corner. Here's the corner, so that would be where 130 would live at. So from 130 back to this corner back here to the secondary hour of 430, I'm gonna cut a line that will be flat between 130 to 430. I'm not gonna cut anything past those corners, basically. Everything will be cut inside. So there will be a little shift back on this. This will go straight down, but there will be maybe a little shift back on this very front area, because again, I wanna make sure I cut inside the corners. Yeah, as to really spread and create a long line. Thank you all for your viewing, I appreciate you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, a couple things I'm gonna do a little bit different. This is uh, this, this kind of pattern is something that I got from my buddy DJ Muldoon, very quality hairdresser, I'm sure most of you know who he is out there in this world. Um, and if you don't, I highly recommend reading up on him, checking into him, he's obviously, not obviously, but he's one of the top guys in the industry. Anyway, what I'm gonna work with here is working right in that weakest area first. Truly, right in through here, around that ear well is the weakest area, yeah? Because there's lots of movement of the ear, there's movements in front to back, there's, it's a higher level spot in the line. So that's a weak spot, basically. So what I'm gonna do, I wanna go right over that weak spot and put a nice strong line at that weakest spot. So if I feel strong in a weakness, that gives me a lot of, uh, a lot of head strength, yeah? So what I'm gonna do is calm down. I'm gonna calm down, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna work with the fine tooth part of my comb. Calm down, make sure all those roots are in there nice and clean. Calm it down, take my comb and go, take my scissors, sorry, go behind the hair, pull it down. Let's go for a length about right there, looks good. Nice and flat down, I got a flat comb, make sure my comb is flat. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna cut below, I'm gonna cut above the comb. Yeah, so I'm purposely trying to create no bevel. Basically, kind of an anti-bevel bob. Nice and flat. See, the nice thing with this too, this scissor has one of those nipple things on it here. If I cut below, eh, 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 it gets in my way. I cut above, I can say nice and flat, nice and strong, and have a nice platform or base to work off of. Yeah, so I got line once established in there. I come right forward to it then. I go right flat down, let me comb through here. Come behind the hair again with a scissor, press the hair out towards the comb. Come in here, press the hair out towards the comb. Come down again, nice and flat, and just see it pop away from there. I got a flat line, I can go through and cut this line in the play. Yeah. And technically guys, just to give you a heads up, if you're doing this yourself, I'd recommend standing right in front of this ear. You will stand right here, but obviously that's not very good for your visual. Yeah, but I would recommend saying right in front of that ear right there. I'm gonna comb this back. There's the line established. I can just go through and cut that through. Nice and easy. There we go. And take this and still work back to the corner. You can see I'm back in this line. I wanna go right back to this corner here of 430, keeping the comb also flat this way. So the comb, is flat this way. I'm not taking this comb and rounding it in this way. The comb is going straight front and back, yeah? So it's corner to corner from 130 over to 430. Perfect. Coming through, making sure that I'm down past this hairline. I bring it down. There I am, making sure this comb is still straight out. And then again, I work right to the corner. And then I just stop. Yeah, so that's the three o'clock side sorted. Okay, uh, come over to the nine o'clock side. Got some moisture in there. Just taking a look to get an idea as per where I went to lengthwise. Okay. So now we, we are doing this obviously kind of a 
blindly starting here on this line here. So now what we're gonna go through and do is, uh, sorry about the cap, sorry, sorry if you don't get any visuals. I am here by myself, I'm doing my best for you, friends. I hope you can appreciate it. Okay, so this is side two. Personally, what I always recommend on side two is always go longer than what you think the length is. Reason being, I don't, I personally feel very insecure if I go back over to side one and have to recut it. To me, that's like I'm fixing my own haircut. The last thing I wanna do is fix my own haircut. Yeah, that's kind of deflating of uh, confidence for me. So for me, I recommend taking side two and making sure it's definitely longer. Let's just take a look to see where things are at. She's definitely about, I see that she's about an inch or so below the jawline. So I wanna play in that area again, right on the weak spot here. Again, right through here. Right, right, truly right around that nine o'clock hour. Come straight down. Put my comb behind the hair again, or my scissor, scissor behind the hair. Press those hairs right against the comb, the bridge of the comb. Bring it nice and down, I'm about an inch below right there. I'm gonna go just a little bit lower for safety. Nice flat comb. And the comb also, I say, I press that comb, the comb is sat right up against that skin there too. So that way it's nice and stable. Keep a nice, strong comb hand, yeah? So I got that in there there. I can take, re-moisturize because it's just a little bit dry there, so that's no equality in there. No equal weight, no equal slip. We wanna have equality in here as much as possible. Coming back, again, working from the corner, of 130 back to 430, so I am shifting this hair back in the front. I am gonna go through, take this hair, come down, come down, and I am working with the fine tooth to have good control in this as well. Good tension, pull. This is definitely a tensioned scenario. Nice flat line, I can see right there. I can go through, cut that. There we go. Got that, and now I just go ahead and finish this line. Sorry, I'm gonna go like this so I'm not, so I don't put my hat in your way. Your visual, your visual way, but I can adjust myself then. Stand right back here, and again, I'm gonna work back to the corner of 7.30. Keep that straight, calm down. There's my guy popping out, nice flat line. I can cut, yeah. So now, the convenient thing, but I can take a look to see these two, to see that they're on or not. And if they're not, I always will start with a shorter, which I'll always start at 4.30 anyway. It's totally fine if there's a little bit, yes, I am going over the comb, Michael. So this is much more of kind of an anti-bevel. Yeah, as for that super 90s, as you can see with this, that fatty, that fatty bob line, yeah? It's much more of a fatty bob line, super anti, anti-bevel, which is great truly for curls, or great for, uh, uh, I would say definitely great for a, more of a youth situation. No disrespect for anyone else, but um, people like different things, different uh, time periods, really. So what I'm gonna do is just split right down that 12 o'clock, six o'clock line, so I can see right where my center's at there. Yeah, so that way I have a guide to know. And what I'm gonna do is stand right at 430. I'm gonna slightly angle this towards the opposite corner of 1030, just to give a little bit of a little bit of a um, under friendly love there, combing. And again, I'm gonna make sure that the comb is flat, I'm not rounding it in towards six o'clock. I'm standing at 4.30 and going from the corner to the corner now. And also I wanna make sure again, come through, come behind the, the hair with the scissor, press that hair against the comb. There I pop up the line there. I have a flat comb line and I can cut. There's that, and then I can come over here, angle towards the opposite. I'm standing at 7.30 now, angle towards 1.30. And I can see on this, the, the, the good thing, I'm happy about this actually, I'm not 100 on this, that's totally great. So that way you can see what happens. So we angle here, F, we angle, we stand at 7.30, come behind here, work right from there. Right through, and then just take, check, check this here to make sure it's sound through. Right there, just a little bit. Cool, 
just that little bit. So now we can let this drop down. We can take, check, see the sides. Looks, looks good there. Take this down. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, guys, I hope I'm not going too fast for you. If I am, I'm sorry. I'm full of coffee. Okay, now I go through, moisturize that top area. You could take this down to one, all depending. We'll take this down, let's just see, because we are gonna be layering the top, so I don't need to be super. Um, yeah, I can, I can see what's there. Since, as long as you can see what's there, you can go ahead and uh, drop it, really. Especially if you're gonna be layering on top of this. Like, I can see all that under stuff as for where the length's at through there. So I can go ahead and drop this all at one, especially because I'm gonna be layering the top anyway. So, bring this right on up. Bring this right on up. Okay, get some good moisture in there. I'm gonna show it to you at this angle just so you guys can see that straight comb. Comb it down. And again, I've already cut some into the front area so I don't need to over direct anything. Now, now everything's just truly just falling straight down, but still gonna go through, work through, comb that hair down. Sorry, I wanna work with fine tooth. I was working with the loose, so I'm gonna tighten it up, give myself just a little bit more control. Tighten it down, work through. And again, I'm just working with corner to corner, standing right here at three o'clock, working through. And again, this is being cut above, this is being cut above the comb as to allow to let the comb just rest on itself. And what that will do again is give much more of a con, almost like an anti-bevel. Yeah, to make it a nice heavy line there and more of a um, kind of a 90s kind of anti bevel line. Almost like a girl from uh, um, Stranger Things, I think is what I'm thinking of too. That young, that young girl from Stranger Things. Okay, combing down through. Make sure the hairs are coming straight down to where they live, coming through, make sure my comb is flat, and I cut through. Combing through, make sure my comb is flat. You can see this flat line is there, and then I cut through. The nice thing with this too that I really like is that for one, it stays very clean like that. The hair stay in the comb. I like the cleanliness of that. Um, and number two, I really like that uh, it, I never seem to be in a situation, sometimes if I cut below the comb, I've had times where I can feel it go and I can feel that it's grabbing a lot of the previous, grabbing a lot of the previous section, yeah? And I'm not a big fan of that. Yeah, I see some weird Iris Age 8, okay? Anyway, um, I'm not a big fan of that. So therefore, with this is very friendly that I can go through and never be in a situation, at least I've not been there yet, never be in a situation to where I feel like I'm cutting into the previous and making a really heavy cut, yeah? I'm not having anything that's aggressive in there. So again, now standing at 4.30. Back corner of 4.30, combing everything straight down. Again, nice flat line, there, is, there everything lives. I go through and cut right through here. Okay. okay, so there's there. And then stand back here at, again, secondary hour of 7.30. Come straight down. Come straight down. Make sure I'm pressing that hair off against the head. And one last one right here. And there we go. So bobs in there. And this bob, again, can be a safe bob that you worked off of if you just appear one length a pure one length line that you find to work off of and or layer off on top of. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do now is layer on top of it. First I'm gonna clean off this hair because we just took off a lot of hair there. Stay nice and clean and respectful, keep yourself safe. Okay. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, bring her down a little bit. So one thing I didn't mention, I worked with the uh, 
I, worked, I was working with a line. Whenever you're working with a line or graduation, have the client's chair or anything like that a little bit taller. Higher, I just stay lower and keeps the eye level. So that way you don't do this and look at horizontal line vertically. Yeah? Anyway, so what am I do now? So now what I'm gonna do is comb the hair forward. Comb the hair forward, just comb the hair forward, and I'm gonna go through and find the corner. So this way it's nice because finding the corner makes it to where you can really customize this for every head of hair, every client or head of hair that you work off of, yeah? So I'm just comb this forward, find, find the corner, put my, basically my fingers right to the head, and there's the corner. So I can go right through here. Let me see, that's seen. When I look at this profile, it's a pretty safe. Yeah, it is safe, it is safe. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with that spot. So I always kind of take a look to see the hairline to decide if I'm into the sides or not. So there's just these little pieces right here that probably are gonna wanna be cut later because technically this is gonna be a part of the bangs. But we'll take a look and see. It's always safe to keep it. I can always cut it later, yeah? Say, stay safer than sorry, I guess. So she's a bit shorter. So what I'm gonna do is just comb back like that. Come on over to this nine o'clock side, comb this hair forward. Again, find my corner. Oh, you guys can see, find my corner. There's my corner. I comb and draw a line in horizontally or flat, parallel to floor and ceiling. Okay, so I'm gonna take and just section this up out of the way for a moment. do is I'm going to just follow this up to the back. So now I'm going to come back here and with this I've got the two lines established into my corners here. You can see where my corners are right there. So I'm going to just bring this on back. This one's a little bit low so I'm going to bring that a little bit high. So I am going to bring that just up a little bit. There we go. Okay. Thank you again for viewing, guys. I'm here with Hair Brain. I'm here on my page. I appreciate all of you being, being viewers of this live experience today. Perspective is key live. So now I'm going to just go through and just draw down this corner. Yeah, so just continuing that through right down this corner. And what I'm going to do is just take this. Take this and twist it. If this were a human, you'd want to be very respectful of twisting this too tight around that area. Yeah? The skin is very soft, very flexible, and loose. So you don't want to pull that skin off of the skull. If you pull that skin off the skull, it's going to not be truthful anymore, yeah? You want this hair to be honest. Yeah, like I saw, IRA, you want it to be honest, I like that guy. So um, you wanna make sure that everything's true, that where you're not expanding or basically making the hair do something that you didn't intend. The hair only does what you ask of it. Hair is very, very friendly, like a computer and a very obedient dog or anything like that. It does what you ask of it because it has no emotions. So if you, come, if you type in, just like a computer, if you type in facebo.com, you'll get Facebook over here. You'll get to see your grandma's pie she made, your dad's politics, all that bollocks. Um, same with hair. You type in straightline.com, you'll get smooth straightline.com. You pull everything out too much tension and make it inconsistent, you're gonna have inconsistent.com. You need to be on a website that you'd never want your grandmother to see that you're on. Yeah, so be mindful what you ask of the hair. Realize it does what you ask of it as well. Yeah, so now I'm just gonna go through here and find a clean separation from the front to the back. Take the comb, put it right up against the head, like this, I can find where that high point's at, and I know that right below, where it's coming off the head there, is where the high point's at, so I can undo this for a moment, stand here at nine o'clock, I know that I split right there. So I split right there. I come on over here to three o'clock. 
this clip right here. And then I just take this, comb this back, and work this back to another clip right back here. Okay, so this is gonna be where we're gonna work all of our layers on this inside now. So, I'm going to take, comb this here forward. Sorry, I wanna make sure you guys are seeing this well enough. Thank you for viewing again, guys. I've gone through first and did a, it was basically a two section, a two section bob just to cut in a line. And now I'm gonna go through and layer the top area and layer it in quite a disconnected manner. Sorry, I'm standing in front of you for a moment. I wanna have this proper. away from the face, letting that just sit right on the previous clips. Okay, come on this then, away from the face, letting that sit on the clip, yeah. So now we have this one little finger width section, yeah, that just goes through that center area. So technically, this would be the 12 o'clock, six o'clock line. So there's a little bit of the nine o'clock side, there's a little bit of the three o'clock side. So it's not right down center, it's, a, it's, it's straddling, it's straddling the center, yeah? So that's kind of weird looking, I won't do that again, but that's all right. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna work today, I'm gonna work, I'm gonna work to try to be kind of boxy a little bit. I'm gonna work concavy. I often do this in more of a convex situation where I follow the head shape um, and I comb to the outside as to make sure, so normally I would take it and round it to make it convex from 12 to six. And then I comb to the outside and I comb to the outside to make it go convexy from three to nine. Today, I'm gonna go through and try to have it be basically flat from 12 to six and have it be flat from three to nine. Yep, so I'm gonna comb, I'll be able to see my flat from 12 to six by where I stand, by standing right here at nine o'clock, I can comb this hair straight up and I can see that I'll create a flat line. Yeah, that will be my cutting line, it'll be flat. And then I will comb to the inside on each side to the previous hour as to fill length a little bit to the corners, making it more again concavy um, and uh, play with that. So I'm gonna work to where I know it's a good safe spot. I know generally for the most part about half half length of the comb is a pretty safe spot to play with. And I'm gonna play with that spot. I'm gonna make sure that this hair is going straight up. It's gonna be just like Paula Abdul. It's gonna be straight up. I'm not shifting or leaning towards six o'clock. I'm not shifting or leaning towards not, uh, 12 o'clock. Nor am I shifting or leaning towards not three or nine. It's gonna go straight up just like Paula Abdul will get. Straight up, now tell me, do you really wanna? Just kidding. So straight up. Home. I got that straight up. I can check in my mirror to make sure I'm not leaning towards three or nine, which I don't have a mirror over here, but I could if I would. Technically, I would go that way anyway. I'd go, if you're gonna be a mirror checker, I'd go with my finger always pointed towards the mirror. That way I can see my nine to three o'clock shift. Yeah, to make sure it's not leaning towards three o'clock or nine o'clock, yeah? Where if I did it this way with the client facing, you see this big thing gets in the way of seeing all this little stuff, yeah? So be mindful, and if you're utilizing the mirror as your friend, I would go through and have your fingers point towards the mirror. Let's see, let's go right into there. That looks good. I can see that I'm not shifting towards, I can see here again that I'm straight up not shifting towards 12 or six, and I can see that I'm not shifting towards nine or three on the other side. Take that, and then I just get rid of it. I comb straight up again. And again, I'm looking to be pretty flat. So going straight up, not shifting to nine or three, just straight up. Go one more time on that. Just like a little guy, there we go, go. And I just go flat with them. And 
straight through. Cool. So, so we'll take a look at this first one. So I always comb through the first one and take a look. So I make sure that there's no little weird hairs that are doing weird stuff. If they are, they're not a friend of mine, you know? Um, and I know right away, I want this to be much shorter than that front area, so I'm gonna change my angle there a little bit, yeah? Maybe even just go a little bit shorter into that front area, because I want even more out of that front area. I know that for sure. Because again, I want there to be bangs, okay? So, I'm gonna take this one more time. I'll go a little bit shorter, number one. A little bit shorter for, for why not? Okay. Okay. So still, still on the longer side, but that's safe there. I can always cut them shorter afterwards. So still seeing that hair go through, I see everything laying there nicely, I can continue. Now what I'm gonna do on this one again, I'm gonna comb to the inside. So I'll come over here, this is on the nine o'clock side, I keep that three o'clock side cleanly over there. I come over here, I grab another finger with section. Comb this hair out of the way. And now I comb to the inside. So number section two is moving over to section one. And I'm gonna just go through again. Two to section one. Okay. I take a look and I always take a look as I go so that way if there's one that's off, I deal with it right then as opposed to doing like five sections and now I gotta redo all five sections. I might as well check straight away. So that's how I do it. So I check that, I see that it's good. Sweet, so I can go through and comb section one on over to the three o'clock side. That's no longer a part of the past that I need to deal with anymore. I take it, bring nine o'clock over, I draw the next finger with section. Take that. Draw this over, come on over, draw this right up, up into that section. And again, I comb to the center as to make it longer to the outside. Again, to quote my buddy DJ, not again, but to quote my buddy DJ, you, you come away or pull away from what you wanna keep. I wanna keep the corners out here a little bit more. I wanna keep some fill in there. It's my Uncle Phil, so I went through and uh, I'm combing to the inside. Again, I can see that it's nice and smooth and clean, so I feel good about it. I can comb section two out of the way. Grab section four. this into section three. Again, combing inside, coming in towards the center. Again, I, one thing I didn't mention, every time guys, I've had this go again straight up and down. So again, I have a floor. I have a floor to start with. That's why I don't subscribe to think outside the box. I'm all for thinking in the box and being in the box, guys. A, a box is a safe place. Think about we're in quarantine, we're stuck in our homes, we're stuck in that box. And it's a safe place for us, yeah? We, if without any walls or floors or ceilings, we have no box, we have no floor, we have no standards, we have no boundaries. We need boundaries in, in life, truly. So I'm utilizing that for consistency as well. Okay, so coming in the center again. Working this through. I comb it through just to check. Everything's doing good. I get out of the way. Comb this through. Get the last one. Comb straight up into the previous. I will say I purposely chose to go concavey like this because it's the easier of the two. It's more between concave and convex. Convex, you have to really 
think and follow a little bit more. You gotta be so much more mindful and on, on your game, just like if you were to be doing um, graduation, yeah? But I purposely, because I knew I had a little bit of a coffee hyperness in me, I purposely went more concave to maintain integrity. Okay, so I comb this out of the way. Down, grab my next finger width section. And again, I'm combing to the inside. And that's why I also think about it that way. I either think to the inside or the outside. I stand at nine o'clock the whole time on this particular shape, and I either think inside or outside. So it's the same on both sides. So that way I don't have so many things to think about. If you go through and you think, just comb to me, I'm only combing to me on the three o'clock side. I'm not combing to me on the nine o'clock side, so I have to think comb away from me. Now I have to think of so many things. I'm ADD. I like to keep it very simple and friendly. So I comb to the inside. Make sure that the hair is straight up. I'm not leaning towards 12 or six. And then I know I can go through and cut it. Comb it up. Make sure that the hairs aren't leaning to 12 or six. Go through it. Through and last section working through. Okay. Again, always check each section as to see that she's doing well. She is. I can comb away the first section. I can now grab my third section. Take that, comb this up into the previous, make sure that I'm not leaning into 12 or six, I can cut as soon as I see the guide. Make sure I'm combing in the center again, as to build length to the outside, not major amounts of length, but a little bit of length, hence I use the term concavy. Concave would be the longest extra length. Concavies, the medium extra length. Convexy would be the next shortest length. And then convex would be the shortest in my world. So I grab section the next one. I'll get just a little bit for the last one. That's all right. Take this again. I'd rather have smaller section than larger section to be respectful and have control. Do what I want to do. I'm in control. Okay. Okay, and then I've got the last section. Going up. Layers looking good there. Alrighty, cool. Then I come to the back side here. I can one, take a look at the hairs in the front, see what they're doing, see that they're, it's, they're doing similar things to check to see that uh, I've got some consistency in there. Yes, you can go through and do a little cross check too. So we might as well, we'll do it for shits and giggles, I guess. I don't know about the shits, but maybe the giggles, we'll see. Just kidding, kinda. So this line should be either, f should be flat for the most part. Yeah, because again, I combed to the inside, sh should be flat. Good day, nice flat line. Yeah, you guys can't quite see it. Everyone always covers their line. I don't quite get it, but there you can see. Nice flat line, yeah? We can take a look at the other side, and if you're gonna check the other side, I personally recommend Checking the three o'clock side, standing at 12. Check the nine o'clock side while standing at six. So that way the fingers are in the same kind of angle. So they're, they're consistent. And again, nice flat line, yeah? And what I mean by consistent, it's skinnier on the tip, it's wider on the inside, yeah? So I don't wanna check this one this way and then check this one this way. Yeah, I need to put my thing down, flip it and reverse it, yeah? Okay, so now I can go to the back. And going into the back, what I will do is comb about fingers with the hair and comb that right into the back now. 
comb what I previously cut and comb that into the back. If I join that into the back, I'm gonna just take and comb those hairs forward that are here. Okay. So now I'm gonna go through and take this clip out. Take the clip out of there. And I'm gonna draw a solid line below, just above, just above the round of the head right there. Yeah, right, the comb's coming off the head there. I'm gonna take and just draw a line across there. Yeah, take that, clip this up for a second, and then grab another clip. Have yeah, that should be down and put the clip there just to hold the hairs in place, just to keep some consistency there. Yeah? Okay. So now I can go retake that clip out. Put some moisture into those hairs, get them under control. Comb the hair down, standing right at six o'clock. We're gonna play, we're gonna play convexy into concavy meaning slightly follow the head, working into a slight over, not a slight over direction, but a slight elevation, making it uh, be, turn into opposing the head shape towards the bottom, leaving a little extra length to flow into the longer length below, slash making it more concave -y. So first, I'm gonna go straight up. I'm gonna now stand at three o'clock, and this is all what I say, stand at nine o'clock or three o'clock, is for the right-hander. If you're a grown-up like me, and you're right-handed, just kidding, left-handers, um, thank you, Instagram, for that. But if you're a right-hander, stand now at the 3 o'clock side because now I have a guide on the 12 o'clock side that will support me. Yeah? A lot of people, my buddy DJ would even say stand over at 9 o'clock to do this. Downfall on this specific one, the guide is right here. So it's very hard to cut to your guide. It's easier to cut from your guide. Yeah? So I'm going to hold this straight up. Again, just like Paula Abdul, and just like before having a floor and a consistency, the first thing I'm gonna do is just go flat, straight up. So I have a nice starting spot. I can go flat there, right to the second knuckle, and then I start to round. And I'm gonna read that root. I wanna make sure to draw nice clean lines in here. Okay, so I'm gonna read that root, making sure that I'm, making sure that I'm going through and following the head a little bit into that con Vexy manner. I'm convexy, and I'm starting to move right into here. There's elevation happening right there in those hairs. It's starting to move into more of a concavy. You can see the hairs coming up away from the head shape. They're first gonna become longer, and it'll flow through, and it'll fall into this longer length below. I can take a look at that first one to see how it flows through. If it flows through nicely, then I know I can go ahead and continue. And it did that, thank you. So what I'll do is I'll take section two and comb it into section one, just like I did in the front. It's going to be concave from side to side because I'm combing into the center. So I'll be building some length into the corner there. And now again, same situation, working from convexy into concave. Take section one, comb it out of the way. Section two, or section three, comb it into section two. Again, working convexy into concave. Very easy to see that line happen as we're standing right here back at three o'clock. I'll take the final one here, comb it straight up. Again, straight up to the floor, or straight up like a floor there. And then now following through, working convexy into now concavy. And there's the three o'clock backside sorted. Comb this back. Comb this out of the way. So now I'm working on towards that nine o'clock side, combing into the center again. I find a flat spot again, again to where I see that guide. I went through, working again convexy 
following the head shape for a little bit. And now working into more concavy, slightly opposing the head shape to fill as it goes down. Okay, take that first, take that first section, comb it out of the way. Now I take some of my second. <clears throat> take that, bring it on up again. So I nice and flat, there's my guide. Working again, convexy there for a moment, for a moment or two, like a section or two, following that head shape. And now trans, transferring from the, your convexy into your concavy. Taking that last one now, combing this straight up. And there we go. So, pull this down. This clip out now, I take this clip out now. Take all the fun clips out. Take your clips out, oh yeah. Check your later clips. I can go through, get some moisture on this. recommend just getting nice nice and wet throughout what I'm going to do this girl now is I'm gonna take just like this one I can see that the things are doing similar things that's good that's good news which is good on that I'm gonna take just like this I'm gonna take and spray some of the stuff that Tatum gave me some of this uh, sea spray stuff Spray this throughout. Okay. So one, I spray that through. I'm gonna just comb through again. So the nice thing with this again, when you see this, you cannot even see any contrast here of the length here that's this short, right next to the length right below it that is this long below it, completely disconnected, yeah? But yet, it's, it's completely disconnected, yet it's very fluid, and you can't see the contrast of the short to long. The reason behind that is because it's disconnected at the proper area of the head. A corner is a change of direction, guys. So it's a great place to change in the direction or to disconnect from, yeah? And that's why I, I highly, recommend to you to learn and learn the landscape of the head and really uh, um, utilize those corners as much as possible. What I'm gonna do on her right now is I'm just gonna basically go just like this. I'm gonna keep this very, very technical. Go like this, I'm gonna go like this. Like this, shake her out. One, you'll see, this is, I like this move. You'll see, there's my, there's my flat shape there. Did you see my disconnections? Yeah, so you can see that. Nice flat shape, so I, I did all right there, and there's my disconnections. I can take this and just let this shake upside down for a minute, shake around. I'm so technical, and, and uh, I see people a lot, they, they want the hairs to sit in place when they do things. I am not that guy for the most part. I want hair to move around, and I want it to be able to move around and be fine and be good, yeah? So to me, that's when hair is uh, really cool, when it can do the different movements into things and be in a sound spot. So from this then, I'm gonna take, put her down, back into her, back into place here, and now I'm just gonna basically go through here, just kinda softly work her into an idea of a shape here. We'll play, we'll play trendy and work off the center part there. And just let this kind of work into place. I'm gonna let her air dry now, and I'll take photos later and let you guys see on my Instagram, um, and I'll make sure to tag Hairbrain. What I'd love for you guys to do, if you would for me, do me a favor, do a screenshot right now, tag myself, 
It's I-R-A-P-O-P-E-S-A-G-E. And also tag Hairbraid, at Hairbraid official, I think even. Um, but uh, I appreciate you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this class today. A little recap again. I played within my clock concept, 12, 3, 6, 9, 1, 30, 4, 30, 7, 30, 10, 30. I worked a line from 12 to 6. I then drew, I stood at 4.30, I drew a rounded line without any corner into place. I came over to 7.30, drew a rounded line without any corner into place. I clipped that up. I stood at 3 o'clock. I cut a flat line from 1.30 to 4.30. I stood over to 9 o'clock. I cut a flat line from 10.30 to 7.30. Yeah, all starting in the weak areas, basically. Um, and I cut that above the comb as well, as to create an anti-bevel. Yeah, a very wide, almost broomy edge bottom. Um, and then I dropped the remainder. I followed that through and traced that through. Then I went through and I found my corners. And my corners. And I drew a line from 1.30, 10.30 to 4.30 to 7.30. And then I cut this top area, meaning top area flat from 12 to 6. So that way it was shorter at, shorter at 6, longer towards 12. And I comb to the inside, making it flat from three to nine. So therefore it would be concavey from front to back, concavey from side to side, yeah? And then went through and uh, cut that into the front area while standing at nine o'clock. And then I stood over to three o'clock and followed that through. Again, both sides, both the 12 o'clock side and the six o'clock side combing into the center, therefore making it concavey from ear to ear, yeah? I hope you guys appreciated this little this little demonstration here, um, and I'll have photos for you later. Thank you again so much, Hairbrain, for having me. Again, I'm here in Las Vegas. My name is Ira Pope Sage. I teach 101s here if you're ever interested. I'd be very happy to do that. I have a sale right now. Contact me if you'd like. Big love everyone from Hairbrain, and big love everyone on my page too. I appreciate you guys. Ciao, friends. And share it, share it up, friends. Share it up, friends, if you like. Finish on Hairbrain. Thank you. Oh, Tracy was here. Awesome, Tracy. I'm a great girl. Or oh, you're talking to Michael anyway, not me. I appreciate you guys. Ciao.